Transport Fever, the classic transport simulation video game on PC created by Urban Games, has reached its second iteration with Transport Fever 2, which released today and you can purchase on Steam for $39.99. If you are unfamiliar with what Transport Fever is as a video game, it can be summarized simply as a sandbox simulation video game. And specifically in Transport Fever, you work your way up from 1850 towards the late 2000s building your very own transport company which includes boats, trains, airplanes, and tons of different vehicles throughout the history of time. Now before I proceed any further with the review, I do want to be upfront with you guys. I did receive this key from the dev team, but beyond that, I am not sponsored to make this video, nor was I paid to make it, and all the things that I say and my opinions are my very own. Also, I promise not to spoil anything from the campaign or the in-game content as I find that is best for you to figure out on your own and that this review is more focused on the fact of whether you should purchase the game and not a complete breakdown of everything that is in the game. Also, I never played the original Transport Fever and I will be reviewing this title, Transport Fever 2, as its own game and will not be making a comparison or the differences between this iteration and the first Transport Fever. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about the most important topic in any video game is the graphics and optimization because if you can't even look at the game or even play the game, then it's definitely not worth buying. So where does Transport Fever 2 fall in that category? If I had to rate the graphics for this game on a scale of 1 to 10, it would be about a 6.5, maybe a 7. You're not going to see anything revolutionary or just outstanding AAA title graphics in Transport Fever 2, but you're also not getting anything really crappy. You're getting a very standard set of models and aesthetics that run okay. I think they spent a good amount of time getting the graphics right on the vehicles, all the boats and the airplanes. They all look really, really good, but I feel like the terrain and the map and some of those objects are a little lacking, but all in all, the graphics are definitely above average, and from what I I have heard and the little bit that I know of Transport Fever, the original game, it has been an upgrade from that. But the next important thing we should talk about is optimization. This is critical to any video game because if you can't even freaking play it, you definitely do not need to buy it. For me, the optimization was a little iffy. So there were times where I had really decent FPS, around the 60 FPS mark while running on entirely high settings. But as the game progressed and as there were more models, and just more resources being used of my computer to run the game, the FPS dropped to about an average of 40, maybe 45. But then if I went and zoomed in really fast or moved around right after clicking out of a menu, I would get some micro stutters and also my FPS would drop to as something as low as 20. Now again, this is run on entirely high settings, but all in all, in terms of optimization, I think it's about below average. There are definitely other sandbox games that you get a a lot more FPS and just have way better optimization than this one and so it's a little bit of a, a letdown for me. Even then I think if you reduce the settings and you play on smaller maps you'll still be able to pull at least 30 FPS if not more and have a good gaming experience. Next up that's important especially for a tycoon or simulation game is the UI. Now I'm a big advocate for things that are simple and easy to find especially when there's a lot to navigate through when you're building things or trying to look at your, your financials, your economy. And in Transport Fever 2, I felt like the UI was simplistic and straight to the point. It was very easy to navigate all the menus, all the filters. Um, I didn't really need a tutorial to find things because everything was kind of where you would think it would be. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was just a really pleasant experience navigating through the UI and not being like, oh my God, I wish they did this or oh my gosh, like I can't find this. And well done devs, the UI is easily navigated. Also in regards to the UI, I felt like they added a lot of very nice quality of life buttons and little tricks and things that, to help you manage everything that you're in charge of because it is a lot especially the further you get in the game you have a lot of vehicles a lot of things to keep track of um, and a lot of you know for instance if you have a line and you have 40 vehicles in that line instead of having to replace each vehicle when it gets deteriorated you're able to just hit a select all button it highlights all the vehicles for that particular line and then you can hit a button that says replace 
and then you pick the vehicle you want to replace with it and just switches them for you. And you can even do that for multiple lines at the same time. It's just a very awesome feature. So now that we know we can operate the game, play the game and look at the game and it be a pleasant experience, let's get down to the details of the gameplay, which really make or break a sandbox title. Transport Fever 2 is a true sandbox game with the freedom to play however you want to play it. Just like any modern sandbox or simulation game, a player should have the ability to change almost anything about their experience and how they can play the game itself. And in Transport Fever 2, you can literally start in any period. You can generate different maps with map seeds. And then with that, you have a lot of customization of how big the map is, what's in the map, all that good stuff. There's even map editing where you can create your very own map as well as other options such as disabling money or cost and adjusting difficulty and those are all must-haves in this type of game because it's a sandbox game you want to play it how you want and how one player wants to play it is not how the other one wants to play it so I'm very glad to see that urban games stuck to the fundamentals in this regard if you were familiar with simulation and tycoon games it's an easy game to just jump right in and get going it's easy to learn but it offers a lot Lot of details and strategies especially at the beginning of the game where it will add some replayability because you're like oh I could have done that differently or I could start this way this time but you may play on a different map next time and the start may differ there's just so many different ways to play this game which I love and to give you an example my first map I started off by building boats it was a little bit expensive but it worked out but the start wasn't what I wanted to but I thought with the map that I was given that was the best strategy but then the next map I had a, two big cities that were right next to each other so it made perfect sense to just have a railroad connect both of them to get my passengers moving and start generating early cash. So I hope that paints a good picture for you in terms of the replayability of Transport Fever 2 and the ability for you to formulate different strategies each time you start a fresh game. And lastly, I would like to sum up the gameplay of Transport Fever 2 from my experience. And I thought it was very rewarding to start from 1850 and have very limited funds. I basically started the vanilla way where you get 5 million cash at 1850 and you build your transport company from there. And it was just a very nice and easy, not in terms of difficulty, but just simple progression from start to finish. But by the end of it, you're managing so much. It's incredible, uh, but also very rewarding. And I really applaud the devs on that because some games get the progression wrong. But all in all, the progression and the gameplay was a lot of fun and rewarding. It was very hard to put down. It's very similar to games like Civilization where you just want to keep going or you want to do one more thing the next thing you know 17 hours goes by all right i want to talk about that moving on so that was a good segue into talking about the amount of content and replayability of transport fever 2 and this is an important topic because i feel like this really correlates to the price of the game and how much bang for your buck you're going to get um, a lot of people talk about you know one dollar for every hour they play i don't really know what what the correct pricing mechanism or algorithm should be but i can't give you my experience with the 17 hours of of gaming I did in Transport Fever 2. It was at about the 10 hour mark that I felt comfortable with the game. But I took my time as I played. I wasn't in a hurry. So I'm sure previous Transport Fever players can really get to the end game a lot faster if they want to rush it. So I can't say that getting to the end game content is a 15 hour playthrough because it definitely could happen a lot quicker. But that's not all the game is. The progression, taking your time, the multiple ways of playing all add to replayability. Also not to mention the fact that they have modding and it is linked to the Steam Workshop. I love when games do this, so that's a thumbs up for me. I think it's something every game should allow because it always enhances the content and replayability of games. And we talked about map customization and seeds, allowing every game you do play to feel different and a bit more fresh than the previous playthrough. If you feel like your game is stalling or things are taking way too long to progress, you do have the ability to progress much quicker if you wish with a couple cool features that I love that they add added into the game. They added two different game speeds. One is your actual game speed, which is how quickly your vehicles and your city moves in real time. Then there's a secondary speed that you can adjust, which is called the date speed. And this is how fast the years go by. Man, it is a lifesaver. Now, for my recommendation on should you buy Transport Fever 2, and the answer is yes, absolutely.
I recommend adding this to your library, especially if you enjoy the tycoon, sandbox, or simulation genre. Now, it's not a hardcore train simulator or boat simulator, so if you're looking for something like that, where really you can get into the cockpit and look at all and turn all the dolls and all of that good stuff, then you're going to need to find a different game. Also, if you are new to the tycoon and strategy genre, there are definitely higher quality and easier games in this genre that you could start out with, but if this is something that you really interested in don't hesitate trying it even if it's your first time in this genre because their ui is phenomenal very easy to navigate and figure out from your first time and that is why i have no issue recommending it to both experienced and new players and is worth buying for 39 dollars 99 and before you close out of this video make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified when my next review goes live